Hello, I'm Stefan Graeber, I'm the project leader for LexD, and today I'd like to talk about instance limits. Instance limits are a good way to limit resource consumption from within LexD instances, whether they are containers or virtual machines. They allow limiting things like CPU, memory, disk, network, uh, and even the number of processes running inside an instance. There, there are a few differences here between containers and virtual machines. Not all limits will apply to both in the same way. The majority of limits will apply live to containers, but will require a reboot in the case of virtual machines. And virtual machines, um, well, for containers, they default to getting access to the entire amount of host resources. So all your memory, all your CPU, everything. Virtual machines, on the other hand, do need a, an actual uh, size to, to start up. And Lexd defaults to one CPU, one gig of RAM, 10 gigs of disk for virtual machines. So if you want to get your virtual machine with more resources than, resources than that, then you need to actually set a limit on it uh, with the desired amount of um, memory and CPU. All right. The actual config is done through XD configuration keys on the instance or through a profile. So this is the documentation uh, on our website where you can see all of the limits configuration keys here and the description. But let's look at some concrete examples and just switch to a terminal. So I'm going to be launching both a container and a virtual machine. So let's start with the container and then the VM. Just look at how things are right out of the box. So in this case, the container has 16 CPU cores. Uh, the memory shows all 64 gigs. The disk shows all 600 gigs. And if we install something to test the network, so iperf i also run an iperf server on my host system you can see that container can do 60 gigabit per second or so uh, to the um, to the host over the network so there's no limit there whatsoever now let's look at the virtual machine so it's got one cpu one gig of RAM, 10 gigs of disk, and there's no actual limit on the network, but because it's a virtual machine and it's also quite resource constrained right now, it's going to be a bit slower. Okay, so in the neighborhood of 40 gigabit per second. All right, so let's go and look at applying some limits, starting with the container. So first thing we try to do is change the CPU to say two CPU cores and memory to two gigs. Let's see if that did the trick. CPU is, looks good, memory looks good, and that was changed completely live. The uptime still shows that's been up for one minute, so it didn't restart or anything to apply it. Now on the on the disk side of things, um, we still see. 600 gigs so that's not been changed for that need to override the root disk and set its size so that overrides whatever came from the default profile in this case so let's hit it down to 10 gigs and here we go 10 gigs now for the network the same can be done too um, let's try to actually do it while the test is running so do that and get a second terminal then prepare an override on the network card and put a max lim speed of say 10 megabit so it will start at 250 something gigs then apply the limit and we see it rapidly going down and then stabilizing to 10.5 megabit per second and then if I go and do a instead of override, if we go and set it, so it's going to start at 
again around 10 megabit Oops. and then we set the key there we go we're back up to 60 gigabit per second so that's the main options that most people will use on an instance there's some more stuff that can be done especially around cpu um, right now the way it's been done is i ask for two cpus which means lexd find two cpu calls on my system and pins the entire cpu onto that you can actually look it up in the status and if you look at cpu allowed list here it shows the containers currently pinned to call uh, 12 and 14. That's not ideal. It's not the best way to actually spread the load across the entire system. Um, because it currently limits me to exactly those two CPUs and if they're busy doing something else, it's gonna get slow. There are other ways to give that two CPU, um, the two virtual CPU effectively to the instance. Um, so for that, let's just unset the limit, which should bring it back to seeing everything, zero through 15, there we go. And so as it stands, it can actually use the entire CPU, which is not ideal. But there are other ways to, to do this. So now you can do set, and instead of setting limits at CPU, use limit CPU allowance and set that to 200%. What this does now is if the system is not loaded, um, you can use as much CPU as you want. If the system is loaded, you get to use the equivalent of two CPUs worth of time. Um, the way this would typically look, uh, let's see if we can run htop down there, and install stress ng, another package. Okay. And then there is a CPU mode, is it just dash CPU a number? I think. Okay, and let's actually look at the hand quickly. So this is a uh, called stress ng. It's a tool to do various stress test. Okay, there's C and number. Okay, so C and let's do 16. So this is gonna be burning the CPU as can be seen in uh, in the HTOP view down there. Because nothing on the system was using those resources, the container could use all of it. There's another syntax for that now, which would be, uh, let's say, we give 20 milliseconds worth of time out of every 10 millisecond slice. So that's again, two CPUs, but with a hard limit at the scheduler level. And this time, what you, you get to see down here is that it's still running 16 processes, but no one CPU is used 100%. It's in the, instead spreading that load to be about equal to two full CPU worth of time. Um, so this is a really good way to have like very fine grained resource consumption controls on the CPU side of things and use your system's resources to the maximum by not just pinning to physical CPUs instead. It's also not an option for virtual machines, unfortunately. Virtual machines, uh, either they're just kind of floating processes uh, for the vCPUs or they're pinned to specific CPUs and that's pretty much the only option. Another thing that can be configured is right now, uh, I get access to swap space and there's a config key to change that. So limits.memory.swap and then the swap goes away. It's a bit of a lie. It's not technically possible to completely disable swapping on Linux, but it does set the swappiness such that this container is gonna be swapping as the absolutely absolute last thing the system would ever swap effectively. Uh, so that's effectively the same as turning, turning off swap. And the last thing that's interesting for, for containers is you can set a process limit. So right now, as we could see, I could spawn this, which spawns around 16 processes. Now say limits.processes equals, uh, I'm not actually sure how many are running in there, but let's do 30. See if that still works. Okay, it still does. So let's ask for more than can be done. Uh, this is not actually failing, which is slightly odd. Um, let's see how many processes are actually used in there. But 
Okay, so currently got 13 processes. I will add 30. So I'm guessing stress energy just doesn't blow up when that happens. So let's just set it to 14 processes. Okay, and now I can't even enter the container because of that limit. Okay, and now I can enter but can't spawn anything. Um, okay. okay, that I can still do. I guess like I'm, I must be right at the edge. Um, so yeah, you can set process limits. Normally what I would do is set it to something reasonably high, like, you know, two or three thousand or so, which is plenty for just about anything you might run in a container, but also we prevent any kind of fork bomb or any of that kind of stuff from ever harming the, the whole system. So that's on the container side. That's really the, the main limits for CPU, memory, disk, network, and processes. Now let's just take a quick look on the VM side of things. So as I mentioned, um, perpetual machines, they need to be they need to be stopped. So the first thing we need to do is stopping the VM. And let's just give it a few more resources here. Uh, so CPU is to four limits memory, let's do eight gigs. Uh, and also override the root disk and give it 20 gigs. So that's gonna grow it a bit. Actually, it takes a little while because it needs to actually happen in the background. Um, and then let's put a network limit at 10 megabit. And then start that VM backup. Let's see how quickly it's starting up. Okay, it's back up. And Four CPUs, so that looks good. Memory, got eight gigs, all good. The disk is now up to 20 gigs. Obviously you can't shrink it. And like, so for a container, you can actually shrink the disk space if you want to, for a VM, you can't. Uh, you can only ever grow it. And the last thing to test would be the network. So let's see. And it's as slow as expected. So that shows the same limits apply to both containers and virtual machines. It also means you can put those kind of settings directly inside either your default profile or another profile and then apply that to multiple instances. One last thing that might be worth just showing is uh, there's also some kind of, uh, there's a, an option to launch, which is called, uh, where's instance type, type here. And that allows passing some different syntaxes. Um, I'm just trying to remember my cloud instances because one thing it supports is it supports uh, instance type names from Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft Azure directly. Um, it also supports an alternative syntax like I could do C, let's call that container C2. So C4M8, I think is a valid syntax. And what that means is we get four CPUs, eight gigs of RAM. Um, T1 micro, is that a valid one? Yeah, it is. Um, so you can use an instance type from, I guess in this case, AWS, and that will get you matching resources with what you'd get in such a cloud instance. So in this case, apparently one CPU and 500 to 600 megs of RAM looks like. Um, so that can be convenient too, as, an, as a shortcut for the, those kind of resource limits. It's always possible to use like the longer syntax at launch time too. So you can do like, I want seven CPUs and memory, let's do three. And you can just do it that way too. That, that works just fine. And there you have it. This is like a, a look at resource limits in NextD and kind of how they work, how they apply, how easy they are to use. It's, I would really recommend applying those, especially on any kind of production or shared environment. It's very, very handy to prevent any container from going rogue or VM from going rogue and, and really using all of your resources on your system. Um, they're very easy to, to work with and they can be used to really maximize the, the usage of your host resources. They're also really light, like they, there's not much overhead in applying most of those limits. And yeah, hopefully it's something that's going to be useful to, to a bunch of you.
Uh, if you've got any any questions, leave them down below in the comments or on our community forum that you'll find a link to in the description. And I'll see you in the next one.